Hello there, my name is Kaylee. I'm a third year medical student currently doing my clinicals in the US. And today we're gonna to be talking about loans. And this is Nico, I have him here because otherwise he's gonna be pattering around everywhere. So I really wanted to make this video because I do have people that come up to me, like parents or people that are interested in going to medical school. And they say things like, yeah, I don't know if I can be a doctor. I don't know if I can send my child to be a doctor because I don't know if I can afford medical school. I'm thinking about sending them to another country so it's cheaper. These are like legit conversations that I've had. So I just wanted to talk about like all the ways that you can pay for it. More so like how I pay for it, especially in the US. I just want to make it seem more possible, you know, like you don't need to pay everything up front. There are loans that aren't as scary as you might think. Before we get into it, make sure to like and subscribe because I make videos like this all the time and you know, you won't be disappointed. So as we know, medical school is not cheap. It will cost quite a bit to become a physician. So I wanted to pull up this average medical school debt website from educationdata.org and just kind of go through with it with you guys. So it says the average medical school debt is 215,900. So that's not including the cost of like getting your undergrad degree, like your bachelor's, your master's, your doctorate. And then it also says the average medical school graduate owes 241,000 in total student debt. So that's like including the actual cost of if you did get another degree in the past. I do know quite a few people that were in my school that ended up getting other degrees besides just your required bachelors. And then if you look down, 76 to 89% of medical school graduates have educational debt. So that's nice because that means that not everyone ends up with debt. I don't know if that means that they are blessed and they have parents or a loved one or just someone who is paying for their, their school so that they don't have to, if they got scholarships or if they're just like a really good investor or they work to save the thousands of dollars, I'm not too sure, but it seems like that's something that happens. <laughs> and you can notice that over time, the medical school debt has just gotten better and better, bigger and bigger. <laughs> and we can see, I find it interesting, like I was looking at public versus private medical school debt. My school is private and I was pleasantly surprised about the difference because it says medical, public medical school graduates owe $2,000 less on average than private. Honestly, I thought there would be a bigger discrepancy. Um, and then it says, this is something I thought that was interesting too. 200,000 was a median student debt among private medical school graduates, but the cost of their education was 306,000. So I thought that was interesting because I don't know where the other $100,000 went. So I don't know if that means that they worked, that whenever they say the cost of their education, it was also talking about like cost of living. So maybe they live with their parents, but I'm not too sure. I do find that interesting though. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you my student loans, how much I personally own, and keep in mind that I did get like $50,000 in scholarship, a little bit more than that. I initially got enough for housing and my tuition the first semester, and then after that I just applied to some smaller ones, and I got one for my community, like being an active part of my community. So you can apply for scholarships throughout. They're gonna be smaller, like at least for me, it was like on average like 3,000 a scholarship, but you know, they add up. And also keep in mind that I do not have any undergraduate loans as well. So this is all purely my medical school. So this is my loan amount. <laughs> yeah, I know it's quite a bit. And you can go ahead and add $100,000 to that because I still have almost a year, a little bit less, a little bit more, depending on how you look at it. I think I'm graduating in almost exactly a year. So, and it's about $100,000 a year. So I'll probably end up with about $400,000 in debt. Woo! <laughs> but it is interesting because quite a few of my colleagues, like the, the people in my school, they have quite a bit more than me because sometimes you need to repeat a semester. Sometimes you take it like for me, for example, for my school, we had either four semesters or five semester option. I took the four, four semesters. So some people had to pay for that extra semester. It wasn't really extra, it was just, you know what I mean? Um, or if you failed, then you had to retake it. And also if they didn't get, you know, scholarships, if they paid for their undergraduate or their extra degrees. 
So I had quite a few, I think on average it was more like 600,000 from the people that I knew. And I even knew someone that had a million dollars in debt because initially they became a lawyer before going to medical school. So that's interesting. So you should also keep in mind the fact that you get your money in a lump sum amount. So the amount that you're supposed to live off of is about, for me examples, is about $10,000 per semester. You get it about three times a year. <laughs> so overall, I get about $30,000 a year to live off of, but you get that all at once. So you have to make sure that whenever you get this amount, you are planning for the next four months and you are also trying to save up for the costs that aren't really at mentioned as much when it comes to medical school. So you have to take into account that your board exams are like $1,000 each. Your applications for residencies can be very expensive, like thousands of dollars. And also traveling to your interviews are very expensive as well. So they do say that you should save about $15,000 at least for the interview process and then on top of that you know the cost of board exams and everything so the cost of the flights and everything to your interviews your travel you know like it can get it can pile up very quickly so when you get this amount of money it's important to go ahead and make sure that you budget well enough to live off of it and also that you are you know saving up a good amount and some people are really good at it so they are able to immediately give back some of the amount so you'll, you saw how much I would get per year but also you can give back an amount initially so you don't even collect interest on it you get that loan you say oh no I don't need this much say you're living with your parents you say okay no I don't need this much I'm gonna go ahead and give it back pay it immediately or you don't have to accept all of it at once or if you see by the end of the year that you have more than you need then you can go ahead and pay it back initially so that you decrease your interest so I have the direct loans the plus one is more expensive the initial loan fee is already four times more than the other one and also the actual interest rate that collects over time that's more expensive as well which is a good reason why you would not do consolidation because loan consolidation is an option so if you would like to pay off the more expensive one so for me it'd be the plus if you would like to go ahead and pay that off initially then you can do so if you don't consolidate but if you consolidate your loans then the interest will average out and then you'll have to pay the one in the middle so you know it's up to you if you don't want the headache of paying two loans then go for it and consolidate but if you would like to pay a little bit extra money towards the one that is collecting more interest then that's an idea as well and now I'm gonna go ahead and go into the repayment plans I'm gonna read them off and also show them on the screen because you know it's hard to memorize so there are three non-income based ones and the three non-income based ones are the standard so that's one where you would just pay 120 monthly payments and it averages out to 10 years and that's your entire loan so all of your loans are paid off within 10 years and you have a standard payment that's why it's called standard and then you have the graduate payment so the graduate payment starts out lower and then gradually increases and for that one you are going to end up paying a little bit more than standard because you know in the beginning the interest will be gaining more because you paid less but it does make sense if you would like to pay it off within the 10 years but also <laughs> you know that your income is going to be a certain way you know and then the third one is the extended so that's one that you can actually pay off within 25 years so you're going to be paying the least amount possible but you will pay it off within 25 years and then there are the income based repayment programs and those are good too because you can actually use the public service loan forgiveness program so that one is something where if you do this income based program repayments and then after 10 years you still have some left it is forgiven and you pay like basically kind of this is this is kind of the way that you'll pay the least amount but the catch is that you do have to work for either the government or you have to work for a nonprofit and you do have to be working at this nonprofit or government organization at the time that you apply for the loan forgiveness and the time that you actually get accepted so then these income based are the revised pay as you earn so that one you pay 10% of your income and it is forgiven after 25 years if you still have some left and 
and you have the pay as you earn. So that one's kind of the same thing where it's 10% of your income, but it guarantees that you will not pay more than the 10, like the standard payment, basically, like what, what it would take for you to t do 10 years. So for the revised one, you could potentially pay more than the, than the 10 year payment, but for the pay as you earn, you're always going to be paying lesser than the 10 years. Got it? <laughs> um, contingent, and that one is 20% of your income. And then there is the income base, and that one is 10 to 15% of your income, but it's kind of similar to the other pay as you earn where it will not go over the 10 year program, 10 year payment. <laughs> and then there is the income sensitive, and for this one, you will be paying it off within 15 years. It is income sensitive but you are gonna be done paying for it within 15 years. So those are the payment programs. I know I keep saying you have to keep in mind, you have to keep in mind, but it is interesting because the, you know, especially for doctors, it's, I don't think there is another guaranteed like career where you will be making almost like minimum wage and then all of a sudden you're making quite a bit of money but that's how it is so a lot of the residents that i know are doing the income based because if you didn't know aamc actually said that the average amount that a resident makes is about in the 50 thousands a first year usually makes that much and it depends on where you are and what residency program you're in the least amount of residency and actual payment later on is usually family medicine or internal medicine. You make the least amount throughout residency and you make the least amount when you actually practice. And then in other specialties you make a bit more and then it also depends on where you live. But basically for the amount of time that you're, that you're in residency, you're going to make anywhere from like fifty to $70,000 within those years and then you'll jump up to whatever it is. So that's why people usually do the income base. And then in terms of what I would like to do, my plan as of right now is to do the income base and then fingers crossed, I get into a residency where I will be working at a nonprofit hospital because that works best for me and also I enjoy working for nonprofits. So I will, you know, I plan on having a residency that's probably gonna last about six years. So if I do the six years, well that's residency and fellowship. So hopefully I'll get both. But if I do the six years and then I just work for them or another nonprofit organization for another four years, then it will be paid off and I will be able to do the least expensive route in that if I do the income based and then every all the rest is forgiven, that would be great too. Also, there are some hospitals that do offer a stipend, so they might offer a $100,000 stipend, so if you are really passionate about paying off these loans, then you can go ahead and look for places like that. But yeah, I just wanted to finish this out by saying that I'm definitely not scared of my loans. My, I love my loans. <laughs> I love them just because I know that they will help me ultimately, you know, like I will ultimately end up being a doctor and I couldn't have done that any other way. I know for a fact that I wouldn't be able to save up $400,000 before medical school and I am happy that I didn't prolong it, you know, like no judge, no judging to anyone who went that route and they saved up the amount because that's super awesome and hardworking but I wanted to be a doctor as soon as possible and I know that I will be one and hopefully even if I don't do the, the loan forgiveness where in 10 years, if I have to pay it for 25 years but it's the lowest amount, I'm really not that scared of it. I mean, I don't know, like having debt can be scary but when it's following your dreams versus being scared of having debt, eh. And I do believe that these loans are very repayable, you know, in the beginning it can be rather soul crushing whenever you're making minimum wage and what residency almost because you're working about 80 hours getting like 50 grand a year. It averages out to be very low per hour and then on top of that if you're getting 10% of that taken from you then that can really hurt. But once you're an attending, it's really not as bad. But yeah, hopefully I inspired you maybe even a little bit. Maybe you're a little bit less scared of taking out that loan and you're able to pursue your dreams or you're wondering how the heck am I going to pay this back. And hopefully the information that I gave you kind of can tell you what. <laughs> I am by no means amazing at knowing the stuff though, you know, I don't know everything about loans, I don't know everything about repayments, about interest, or anything like that. I'm sure that there are great 
financial advisements. I know that there are like banks for doctors. There's really good people that know exactly what to do with your money. But do be aware because some people do take advantage of physicians, you know, like if you consolidate your loans and then take another loan to pay for this loan because you think it has a lower interest rate, but then the fee is higher and like now you have to worry about the fee and you know, so just think before you get so excited about paying off your loans or you know, like it's something that you don't want to get taken advantage of for and it's something that you can do smartly, you know, like if you live with your parents and then you're able to pay off pay back some of the money right away or you can do it at the end of the year you know like there are definitely ways to do it to make the the debt not as daunting and you know if you want to invest in some crypto or some stocks then that's an option too i guess i i don't know much about it but i know there are definitely some people doing that now and they're already getting a couple thousand dollars and that's going i don't know if it's necessarily going to their student loans but it's fun, I guess. <laughs> and I don't think I'd worry about working though because you definitely have to, uh, you know, dedicate quite a bit of your time to medicine and learning and, you know, becoming a doctor. So if you're trying to worry about, you know, making, doing a side hustle or working in general, just know that your time in medical school is prob probably costs a lot more than whatever you're gonna make neglecting the medicine, you know? Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you have any questions. If you wanna comment your <laughs> student loans to make me feel better, I don't know, but that would be great. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I just really want medicine to be more obtainable. I don't want people to be scared of taking out loans. I know that some of the parents that I talked to, I kind of gave the speech to, and at the end of it, they're like, oh, okay, okay. Okay, all right. So I just wanted to put this out on the internet. And yeah, if, like I said, if you have any questions, please comment them down below. And if you like this video, please make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification if you want. Um, I'll be making more medical student videos. That's what I do. That's what I do. And yeah, keep up with my journey. And I hope to see you next time. Bye. Usually three times a year. So I'm supposed to live off of about three.